This video will take you through the steps to properly install your new tech wood railing system. To begin, mark where the post mount will be installed. The maximum distance between posts is 75 and 11 16 inches on center. A couple quick notes before you cut. Due to the convenience feature of each railing kit being able to convert to a stair kit, it's necessary for us to leave the post lengths long. This enables the posts to be cut for various stair angles at various heights in custom installations. Therefore, whenever a straight railing is installed, all posts must be cut. Next, cut your post mount to 36 and 7 8 inches. Then cut your post sleeve to 39 inches. Now we're ready to install our post mount. First we'll show you how to install on concrete. Then we'll show you how to install on wood. If you're installing on concrete, you'll first position the post with the metal base flat on the surface and mark the holes. Remove the post and drill the pilot holes. Then insert the plastic anchors. Position the post mount over the holes and insert the screws. If you're installing on wood, note that you'll need a substrate underneath if you're installing directly onto a board to allow for the screws or lag bolts to fully secure the post mount. Be sure to secure your bolts into the wood substrate at least 3 and 9 16 inches to 4 and 5 16 inches. Place the seam or gap between the boards directly in the center of the mount and mark where the holes are. Your installation guide will provide precise measurements. Drill your pilot holes for the lag bolts and install the lag bolts as shown. Finally, you're ready to install your post sleeve. Next, we'll be marking where the railing will attach to the post. Use the cardboard templates provided with your materials and also available on the New Tech Wood website. Measure up from the deck surface to 36 inches to the top of the upper template, the one with six holes and 6 and 1 8 inches to the top of the lower template. Mark where your screws will go. Then pre-drill your holes with a 7 64 inch drill bit. Next, lower the post skirt over the post sleeve. Then connect your top post bracket and then your bottom post bracket. Once your posts are in place, measure the distance between your posts and then subtract an eighth of an inch from that measurement. That's the length to cut your top and bottom rail. Make sure and take out the top rail's galvanized insert before cutting the rail. You'll want to cut that galvanized insert a quarter inch shorter than the rail. Also make sure and leave at least 2 and 15 16 inches between the ends of the rail and the first baluster hole. And make sure those measurements are consistent so that your balusters are straight when installed. Once your rails and the galvanized insert are cut, put the galvanized insert into the top rail. Now it's time to install the brackets onto the bottom rail in preparation for connecting it to the posts. Place the bottom brackets into the rail and screw them into place flush with the edge. After those brackets are installed, it's time for the foot blocks. Just make sure that these are evenly spaced, approximately every 24 inches. Just make sure you're not installing a foot block directly underneath one of the baluster holes. Then pre-drill and install the foot blocks. Next, slide the bottom rail into the bottom post brackets with the holes facing up. Once your bottom rail is in place, install your baluster plugs and your aluminum balusters. Now we're moving on to the top rail. Attach the galvanized adapters on both ends of the galvanized insert. Attach the top rail onto the top of the post brackets while seating the balusters into place. Then pre-drill and screw the rail into place. Next, attach the post caps and gaskets as shown. Then secure the cap to the post with a screw. 